Greetings and welcome to the introduction to astronomy. One of the things that I like to do in each of my introductory astronomy classes is to begin the class with the astronomy picture of the day from the NASA website that is apod.nasa.gov apod. And today's picture for January the 31st of 2020, well, it is titled Goldilocks Zones and Stars. So what do we see here? Well, this is a little graphic to demonstrate some of the properties of stars and how they would be useful for life. So what type of stars should we look around for planets that might support life? And one of those things is called what we call the habitable zone or the Goldilocks zone, which is a region around a star that is where their temperature would be correct in order for the star to be able to support liquid water on the surface of a planet. So on the top for a very small, what we call an M type star, the Goldilocks zone is very small and is very close to the star. For a star like the Sun on the bottom, a G-class star, the Goldilocks zone is much larger and is a little further away from the star. Now, what that means is a lot of things because one of the problems with looking at an M-type star is that they're extremely common, making about three quarters of the stars in the galaxy, so that might be a good place to look for life. However, when we look at the x-rays, it's 400 times the x-rays that we would see get from this type of star because of how close we are and their activity and their magnetic fields. So even though they have some things in going for them that they're very common, that they have extremely long lifetimes, so plenty of time for life to develop, the intensity of the x-rays around them may make it difficult for those. If we look down towards a star like the sun on the bottom, the X-ray irradiance is much lower. However, they are much rarer stars, only a few percent of the stars in the galaxy. And they do have a shorter life, only about 10 billion years. And it took about four and a half billion years for intelligent life to develop here on Earth. Now, if we looked towards even more massive stars, the Goldilocks zone would get larger and larger. However, the lifespans would drop drastically and there would not even be time from our current understanding for life to have been able to form. So many astronomers think it's to look in the middle here in between the smallest, most common stars and stars like our sun, which are the K-type stars. And those are a little bit cooler than our sun. They do have a little more X-ray emission, but not as much as the smaller stars. They're more common than the sun-like stars, and they have a very long lifespan of 40 billion years. So when we look for trying to consider what types of stars might have life on them and might have time to develop life, are, these are all of the things that we have to look at. So what is the intensity of the radiation, different types of radiation from the star that may sterilize a planet's surface? How long does that star live, giving it enough time to be able to develop life? And how common are those stars? So when we're looking for life, we want to look around stars that are relatively common. And the more massive a star gets, the less common it will be and the shorter it will live. So it's kind of somewhere in between that we tend to look for stars that might support, have planets that will support life. So that was our picture of the day for January the 31st of 2020. It was titled Goldilocks Zones and Stars. We'll be back again tomorrow for the next picture, previewed to be Apollo 14 Earthrise. So we'll see what that is about tomorrow. And until then, have a great day, everyone, and I will see you in class.